So I just got a haircut, gotta get ready, gotta get packing, heading to India in the morning. Gonna do my first circumnavigation of the world. So. Hello, it's Kevin Benedict, Senior Analyst for Digital Transformation here at Cognizant. I want to thank you for joining us today. And uh, for many of you who have watched the videos along the way, I want to thank you so much. I learned a lot over the past two weeks of travel here. You know, I went to India. I learned from some of the smartest different uh, groups over there. I saw the latest in the labs, in our mobility labs, our internet of things labs and our augmented reality labs and our digital works lab, all kinds of stuff I was able to learn from and spend time with. Then went on to Barcelona where I attended the Mobile World Congress 2015, saw a lot of stuff out there. Why don't I just start with that? At, the, uh, at Mobile World Congress, it's kind of underwhelmed actually this year. A lot of the same stuff that I've seen over the past few years, but let me just call out some trends. There was none, I'm saying zero, big zero mobile application development platform players in attendance there with booths anyway exhibiting none so what's that tell us well that it category is really in the demise and in return in the rise is the mobile application or the mobile backend as a service those cloud-based api management platforms are all the rage and that's really it looks like where the industry is going to settle on because those don't, they don't feel like they're locked into something that is uh, in early stages and they're not afraid of it like they are mobile application development platforms. So that's a big change there. A lot of augmented reality, a lot of 3D glasses that like Oculus glasses were, sh I saw in a lot of different booths. Many booths had cars there. You saw at a mobile conference, you saw companies like Ford Motor having big booths there and really bragging about the digital user experience of their vehicles and the connected uh, car and the connected ecosystem around that car. So those are some of the bright sides. You also saw quite a bit of introductions of robotics in a number of the different booths there, but also a lot of the same stuff there. So it's almost like the Mobile World Congress is turning more into a connected things type of a conference. So there's some highlights there. Let me just run down some of the mega trends that I'm seeing out there. You know, uh, it used to be we we're talking about devices, then synchronizing data, and then the apps themselves. Really, it's kind of the discussions move beyond that. It's really today about information mobility. You know, who cares what device you're on today or the tablet you're using or the laptop or the desktop? In a way, it's like, who cares? Your data is in the cloud, right? So you want to be able to secure your data in the cloud, access your data in the cloud. So it almost moves away from being a mobile device security and a device management discussion in many cases to secure information and uh, protected information. So you can access, no matter what device you're using today, you can access all your information and applications in the cloud that really so it's really going to be about personal identification how do they know i'm me and you are you so that biometrics things like that are going to be coming into play a lot more especially as we use different devices for payments and transactions how do they really validate that it's you so it's not so much the device although the device plays a part in that with the biometric sensors and things like that so um so information mobility is a big trend there Another big trend is, um, again, going away from mobile devices to actually your information is in the cloud. So how do we personally identify you and protect your information? Uh, you also saw a lot, just the popularity of the cloud in general. We're storing so much more data, both personal and commercial. 
personal clouds in public and commercial and private clouds, etc. So how do we access that at the speed we need? Um, we see the popularity of user experience discussions. It's really focusing in on that, where no matter what venue or what format you're using, your user experience is similar across the board. If you're on the call center, you want them to recognize you, and you want that experience to flow like your mobile app does. If you are on the desktop, you want that web experience to be similar to your mobile web or your mobile application experience and have it pleasing and wonderful, in fact. And if you walk into the store, you want them to know in the store to know the same information they know about you on the app. So there's a consistent, beautiful experience throughout. So user experience is really big. And what does that mean to have a good user experience? It means they know you, they know your preferences, your taste, your history, your transactions, all of that, so you don't have to come in as just a generic foot traffic customer. They actually know it's you and what you like and what your experience over time has been and your tastes and style and preferences, all those fun things. User experience, and what, the, what does that mean? It means that your mobile app has to be that quick. Uh, some of the biggest uh, data that comes out that has the most impact on me or it's had the most impact on me lately is that something like you have three seconds, one report said, after three seconds, if your app isn't loading, people just move on. And a huge percentage, they don't bother to come back because they think your app's just too slow to function correctly. So you have speed is important. And so anything in the back end systems that prevents you from giving an optimal and speedy performance on the mobile app side is a problem to you. I just completed a mobile report called the Real-Time Mobile Infrastructure. If you want it, uh, let me know. Let me know and I, I've got it for you. But Real-Time Mobile Infrastructure, over 80% of companies say they have back-end systems that simply are incapable of supporting real-time mobility. That's a big problem out there that has to be addressed by a lot of companies out there. There's a lot of limitations, a lot of bottlenecks. There's a lot of slow systems on the back-end. <clears throat> and people, the consumers, the, the users... Uh, aren't going to stand for it. So you either fix the back end or get a new system or you're in trouble. That's really how it is. So sensors are very important. Not only the sensors on your devices here, the 10 to 15 devices you have there, and all that data can ha help you as an app company. You can build the data from those sensors into your application to help you, again, hyper-personalize that experience. Everything from is it day or night? Uh, what time of the day is it? What date is it? How does that align with previous patterns of your behavior? Um, where's it, what's your GPS? Uh, are you traveling? Are you standing? Are you sitting? Are you commuting? You know, what are you doing? What is your patterns? Uh, or what are your patterns? And how can I use that information to give you a better experience on the device? So that's very important. Sensors, not only in the smart devices, but in our homes, in our cars, all of that to, again, give us a bit more uh, beautiful and wonderful user experience throughout our life in general, and specifically on mobile applications. And all of that is really, um, is really uh, supported by the notion of code halos. That is the information about you, your clicks, your swipes, your preferences, your history, your taste, your transactions, uh, your behavioral patterns. All of that information can be used to help you in a form context or have an application form context to what it wants to provide you. You know, it, if it's, uh, if it's, do you usually drink coffee at night? If the answer is no, then don't, don't offer me uh, coupons at night for coffee. Uh, give it to me for a, a glass of wine or something that really fits my lifestyle and my pattern. So know the context of where I'm at, what time of day it is, who I am, and offer me the things relevant to my life. So those are the big mega trends that we're studying out there, that we're seeing out there. I hope you find that useful. Look for that real-time mobile infrastructure report. It's really important because it shows what a big challenge so many companies are going to have. And with that, I've really completed my circumnavigation of the world. I'm back in Boise and all is good. <music>